Okay, good afternoon. Thanks, uh, welcome to the Metro Flood Diversion Authority meeting of June 27th, 2019. Roll call, please. This is Shirley. Mr. Peterson. I am here. Mr. Steen. Dr. Mahoney. Here. Mr. Pepcorn. Here. Mr. Grinberg. Here. Mr. Judd. Mr. Hendrickson. Mr. Paulson. Mr. Campbell. Here. Mr. Wayland. Here. Mr. Thorsted. Here. Mr. Jacobson. Here. Thank you. I assume we have a quorum. Quorum. Yep. Thank you. Uh, we were scheduled to have um, Colonel Calkins here and um, and the new Colonel uh, and have introductions of, uh, of him, but unfortunately they had a flight delay and are not going to be able to join us this time. So uh, we will just move on to the minutes of the previous meeting. For approval. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. And uh, you have an order of agenda in front of you. Are there any changes or additions or an approval? Move approval. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 And moving aye. on to item number five, the PMC report. All righty. There we go. Uh, the program controls report the overall program status. Uh, based on 2018 dollars, a 2.75 budget. Um, actual cost to date as of May 31st, 2019 is 465,998,000, leaving a remaining program budget of 2.289 uh, uh, billion. On the fiscal year 2019 cash budget, uh, the cash budget, full budget, is 162723000 Paid to date as of May 31st, 2019 is $22,314,000, leaving a remaining budget of $140,409,000. Right. Co-executive director approved contract items. There were two. Uh, Task Order 16, Amendment 11 for HMG in the amount of $117,500 for permit submittal preparation and other related services. And Amendment 2 to Task Order 26, again for HMG in the amount of 56,976 for work in kind, it's core related hydraulic modeling to, modeling to support design services. Okay, there were some Cass County Joint Water Resource District approved contracts, um, contract amendments. Uh, task Order 2, Amendment to Appraisal Package Number 4 for Integra for $5,500. Task Order 1, Amendment 1 of Appraisal Package Number 7 to Patch and Messner for $3,000. And then uh, Task Order 1, Amendment 2 also to Appraisal Package 7, Patch and Messner for um, contract deduct, uh, deduct of $11,000. Some activities and achievements. Um, just a couple of pictures here and some items on the in-town levy active construction projects. Uh, most of these projects are substantially complete. Uh, and then uh, we just give a little listing here of the active work that's ongoing, backup generator modifications, pump testing, pump starter testing, fuel gauge adjustment, so on, and maintenance. And a couple of pictures there. We thought maybe you'd be interested in seeing those. That's for the Work Package 42E project. And then the OHB Levy Active Construction Project status. Uh, three projects there. They're all substantially complete. And just waiting on turf establishment and then acceptance of punch list items. And there's a picture of the pump station and stormwater pond for that project. Couple other active construction and maintenance projects. The uh, County Road 17 paving is complete. The County Road 17 ditch, ditch cleaning is substantially complete. We have property structure mitigation, which is also substantially complete. And then uh, levy maintenance, which is an ongoing uh, maintenance contract. Land acquisition and property mitigation status. Um, 40 plus appraisals approved in the last month, primarily for the channel and early opportunities. Um, seven parcels with signed purchase agreements in the last month. Numerous purchase agreements being negotiated for the rest of the channel parcels. Uh, developed structure mitigation flexibility approach in coordination with the core Buffalo Red River Watershed District, the MDNR, 
and the North Dakota um, Stormwater Commission for review and consideration. That's on structure mitigation flexibility. Started the process to secure rates of entry to support the I-29 roadways and southern embankment, as well as starting the process to secure the biogeo easements. Supported formation of the Minnesota Lands um, Acquiring Entity, and also supported the NDSU Ag Study Impact. And again, with lands and property mitigation, we're coordinating with Crown Appraisals on the Phase Two flowage easement valuation process, and initiated discussions with the Corps, Onsted Twitchell, and the City of Fargo on the Drayton Dam replacement project. On public outreach and social media, um, current activities are updated the monthly talking points and prepared the three questions video with the Commissioner Bennett. And on the analytics report. Um, provi we provided the website visitors and page views, noted that the most popular YouTube view was the three questions with General Seminite. And points of interest, uh, just to note, is that the project status page has increased from 187 visitors this winter to almost 10 times that to um, 1,851 views this spring. Okay. Short-term look ahead. Uh, we anticipate finalizing Task Order 6, which is a P3 procurement implementation, uh, here very shortly. Uh, continue to support the contested case hearing process. Identify mitigation requirements and permit conditions review meeting with the North Dakota Office of, St um, Office of the State Engineer staff. Begin securing rights of entry for parts of the Southern Embankment. Negotiate the scope for Phase 2 flowage easement valuation. Complete appraisals for all diversion channel properties and support initial activities of the MC JPA, MCC JPA, as well as report to the North Dakota Water Topics Overview Interim Committee. On the long term look ahead, uh, we're looking at looking forward to reactivating the P3 procurement that's pending Task Order Six, confirming the P3 proposal's remobilization schedule. Uh, updating program reporting of budget and schedule to include the uh, latest and overall program, including the P3. Finalize interim funding and financial strategy. Solidify the upstream structure mitigation requirements in coordination with permitting agencies. Um, providing outreach to 30 political jurisdictions related to the CLOMAR requirements. Complete and implement the final uh, the financial strategy. Issue the draft P3 RFP for the diversion channel project, and again, that's pending task order six, and then achieve substantial completion of the work package 42E, 2nd Street, South, and Main Avenue pump station project. And that's it for the PMC report. Great, thank you. Uh, item number six is the Army Corps project update. Um, was there anything to add to that since no one's here from the Corps? Um, Martin is on the Army Corps project. Yeah, Martin has a, an update if you'd like to talk. That would be great. Thank you. Uh, I don't think the schedule was in the packet, was it? I don't recall. I know, I thought Terry was going to hand it out at the meeting today. I wasn't in the packet. It is or is it? No, it's not in the packet. No. It's not. Okay. Hi, Madam Chair and members of the commission. We were going to uh, brief, I think the core was going to bring their uh, overall schedule. I think some people have seen that. We were going to brief the board with that. It's not available today because I think it's on that same plane that didn't, didn't come in. So we'll hold that brief for the next meeting. Uh, the only other item of note, I suppose, from a core perspective is uh, Ames has uh, remobilized. They're starting to pump water out of the inlet. Uh, construction, uh, I believe the figure is something like 70 million gallons of water that they've got to move before they can get going, but that uh, process is underway. Okay, thank you. Item number seven, administrative legal. Wells Fargo loan. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the Diversion Authority Board. Uh, the first item uh, that I have for the uh, board is the consent in resolution uh, regarding the issuance of Wells Fargo loans uh, for Cass County and City of Fargo. Uh, you will recall last month I came before the board uh, with the proposed terms and conditions to extend uh, the Wells Fargo temporary loans 
uh, that are, have been undertaken by the city of Fargo and Cass County. Uh, Cass County currently has a loan in the amount of $100 million. It's a temporary uh, construction loan. And Fargo also has a loan that's in the principal amount of $100 million, but only $50,250,000 of that amount has been drawn down. Uh, those are temporary construction loans. Uh, the interest rate uh, has went down slightly. Uh, the proposal from Wells Fargo that has been reviewed and accepted uh, by the Finance Committee is to extend the maturity of those two issues for an additional two years. Uh, that will get us a little further down the road uh, and we can work, start working through some of the permanent financing for the project. Uh, pursuant to the Joint Powers Agreement, this board must consent to the issuance of debt by member entities. That would be Cass County and the City of Fargo for the project. So we'll be asking for approval of the resolution consenting to the, bond, or to the, to the loan extension. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Move for approval. Thank you. Is there a second? Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Sherling? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Dr. Mahoney? Aye. Mr. Pepcorn? Aye. Mr. Grinberg? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Wayland? Mr. Thorsted? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. And I like he went off. He may come back on. And the motion is carried. On to item B, the WIPIA letter of intent. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and members of the Diversion Authority. Uh, first of all, uh, I apologize for not having a full presentation in the packet. Uh, we have been feverishly working on this item. Uh, WIPIA stands for Water Infrastructure Finance and in in Innovation Act. Uh, and the WIPIA program established by Congress was divided into two components. Uh, WIFIA EPA and WIFIA Army Corps of Engineers. This is WIFIA under the US uh, EPA. Uh, this program has been funded over the last uh, three years, uh, starting in FY 2017. Uh, the project received $25 million uh, from, the, uh, from Congress, which allowed them to select 12 projects uh, for a WIFIA loan. 2018, uh, EPA received a total of $55 million from Congress, which allowed them to uh, approve 39 projects for financing. And in 2019, Congress appropriated $60 million, which will allow them to issue up to $6 billion of loans uh, from 2019 through 2020. Uh, we are applying uh, as, uh, for a portion of the project that is considered eligible for stormwater. Uh, and that would include the diversion channel and some related infrastructure, some lift stations. Uh, the total amount of eligible components of the project is about $1.1 billion. Uh, WIFIA allows you to secure a loan for about 49% of the total eligible costs. So a loan amount of about $560 million is what we would be looking for from WIFIA. Uh, the advantage of the WIFIA financing is it is at treasury rates. So it is difficult to beat that in the private bond market. Uh, some of the other attractive features of WIFIA are that it would not be required to re be repaid until five years after substantial completion of the project. And then it has a 35 year payment, a repayment after that. So essentially it's a 40 year term. And in addition, we can sculpt the debt service, which means that we can match the debt service to what our projected sales tax revenues are. So it's a very attractive financing tool. Uh, during the last month, we've been working diligently to assemble the letter of in interest, which is uh, a document that shows our program's interest in applying for a WIFIA loan. If we are invited to apply, we would know that in about 90 to 180 days. Uh, EPA WIFIA has a process where they'll do diligence the letter of interest uh, and then determine whether we'll be invited, invited to apply or not. Uh, typically those projects that have been invited to apply will receive the loan. As part of this process, uh, they encourage us to work through our state SRF program and to find uh, if there are project elements that are qualified for SRF loans. Uh, I've been in conversations with SRF and we do in fact have some project components that are uh, available for SRF financing, which uh, many of the in North Dakota entities are familiar with SRF financing, which is a, typically a 30-year term with a 2% interest rate. 
And so this really is going with our financial strategy for long-term debt that has a low interest rate on it. And so this is the first step in the process. I would note that uh, EPA WIFIA is different than EP, uh, EPA CORE. Uh, we, uh, with EPA WIFIA, it's a larger program. Uh, it's more competitive. Uh, that said, we do have a good project. And last year, EPA WIFIA funded a similar program or invited, uh, invited them to apply, which is a diversion channel in California. And so we're hoping that given the continued expansion of the EPA program that they would have interest in our program. Uh, we still are looking to support all of the great efforts of our federal legislative team uh, working with Army Corps of Engineers with their uh, WIFIA program. The project elements that are eligible for funding through EPA WIFIA are different than project elements that are subject to funding through U.S. Army Corps of Engineers WIFIA. So the two programs can work together. Uh, they're not mutually exclusive. And so um, uh, in having some conversations with the Corps over the last number of months, I know that they are working to get their program stood up, uh, but their program still needs congressional uh, funding uh, for the actual loans. But this is, uh, this is in keeping with that general direction of trying to find the lowest cost capital for the project and to try to explore whatever options are out there for financing the project. Thank you. Uh, uh, questions? Madam Chair, I'd just add to John's overview. Um, I think it's important to recognize that our original plan that we started the first of the year with um, uh, Plan B financing involved a loan package that we requested of the state legislature and or WIFIA. And as we testified in both House and Senate on the North Dakota side, we were very clear that if North Dakota provided a loan package, that was a preferred option for us, or an option for us. If WIFIA materialized, it was likely that we would um, go the direction of WIFIA because of the, the lucrative terms. And so we're staying on task with the plan that we started earlier this year with Plan B, as John just outlined. And both he and Martin Nicholson have done a wonderful job um, with their uh, acumen to pull this together to move it forward. So it's very important that we continue that uh, to work the plan. And then I think as everybody recognizes, the, 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 the full request that the North Dakota legislature wasn't honored, but um, a strong gesture was made. And so this is a component of that. And so when we, um, when Mary Sherling visits with the chair of the Wiener Water, Water Topics Committee on uh, August 1st, she will have um, this information to carry with her as well. So with that, I'd move for approval. Second. Any further discussion? And of course, just uh, to reiterate that we continue to work with, with our, our North Dakota senators uh, on, on the other with the uh, funding options. So we appreciate that. Um, any, if Mr. I could, Shockley? Yeah, if I could just add for clarification too, for public knowledge, there, there will be an alphabet soup of different financing programs. There's also TIFIA, there's PABS, uh, there's the other WIFIA. And so this by itself is not a silver bullet to solve all of our financing issues. There will be other requests and some of the loans we may get, some of them we may not, but you can be assured that we're working very diligently to find the lowest cost of capital for the project. Thank you. Uh, yes, Mayor. Uh, John, I see Jessica Lee in the audience. So I'm assuming you're going to uh, keep the congressional delegation informed what we're doing and they'll be actively involved in helping with that. I believe that Rocky has been working on making sure that those contacts and those communication channels are kept open so that our, our great uh, leaders in Washington are aware of what different programs we're applying. Because I know his office was working with us on the WIFIA, so this is, and I think we discussed it earlier this year, so thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. This is Sherling. Yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Pepcorn. Aye. Mr. Grinberg. Aye. Mr. Campbell. Yes. Mr. Wayland. Mr. Thorsted. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. The motion carries. Item number eight, public outreach. The committee report. Hi, uh, Rocky Schneider over at this side. Um, Try to see perspectives from both the left and the right, fair and balanced but also the, the video works from this podium and it doesn't work from that podium. So apologize, you gotta turn over here. Um, give the public out outreach update, um, just to add on to what Mr. Shockley said, we are working with our counterparts in DC 
Matt Chiller is working on a letter of support and is um, making his way around to all six congressional offices this week on, on the WIFIA program. So we hope to see that and hopefully everybody signs on and we can do the best we can for that. Also another lay down, apologize for the late lay down of this talking points. I believe you saw this last month. This is an updated version and maybe just to spend a minute on this. This is something Chair Sherling has um, advocated for to be updated every month and provided to the board. You do, will see a number of red lines in there. We tried to make it easy for you and for anybody else using this or if you're using it to talk to constituents that you can page through on a relatively quick basis and see, okay, what's changed? Um, it's a good way to give a quick update to a group or to friends or constituents or your, or your individual boards. And you can go through there and obviously you'll see the major update changes on the Buffalo Red um, Watershed District that's obviously was a rewritten section of it and been a lot of questions on that. You've seen a lot of media on that this week. There was a, a press statement from the chair earlier this week as well that you all have seen. Um, in addition to that, busy week, um, lots of press and questions, but we've had a lot of questions on construction. Maybe, I don't know if because of that or because the weather's warming up, but that's definitely been a topic out in the public. And I know the, the core was gonna be here today to talk about construction starting up south of Forest. There's actually a tour there right now. Jason Benson and Nathan Borboom and Greg Thielman from the Houston Moore Group are out there meeting the tour group. There's three buses, 120 people that are touring the inlet structure right now. So a pretty good sized group. It's the Minnesota Association of Watershed Districts. Their conference is in town. We have a presentation to that group tomorrow as well. Um, it's between 8.30 and 11.30. I think we're the, the third speaking option there. But if you're interested, it's at the Marriott and Moorhead. It's so a good opportunity from sort of the water community from around Minnesota to tell our story. We haven't presented to that conference before, so it's always nice to get one of these new opportunities to speak about our project. Um, another item here is one of the three questions videos. We had a, a, a nice chat with Commissioner Bennett, and we showed this at Outreach Committee yesterday, and then there was a request to show it here, really to kind of memorialize some of the history of the project, and really, you know, we appreciate each of you giving your time to this and and documenting it. I think it helps give a face to the project, which has been lacking in the past maybe. So I'll just play this and hope the audio is working from this side. It's just a short two, three minute. Well, the diversion is a very important insurance policy. Without uh, a diversion, should we have a record-setting flood, then of course the damage to the property of this area would be significant. It could be in billions of dollars worth of damage. And the income tax loss would be significant. Consequently, that would affect virtually almost every citizen in the state and the Red River Valley. I was fortunate to come to North Dakota and the Red River Valley in 1971. That's almost 50 years ago. Uh, I've been superintendent of schools in Fargo starting in 71 for 28 years. And during that time, I have found no other project that is more significant than the diversion in terms of having the potential of helping all people in the complete state, whether living in Crosby or Oaks or Hillsboro. Uh, everybody would benefit with a diversion, should we have another record flood? Now in the past 50 years, we've had about six times that the diversion would have been triggered. And those years are within the lifespan of probably a majority of the citizens that are currently living in this area. And so bad flooding is more recent than historical. 
And that gives you another reason to be cautious because it's happening more often. And the reason for that is that today, a lot of land is now covered by blacktop and concrete and housing and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, swamps have been drained and so uh, we don't have the retainage that we did a hundred years ago. So the same amount of rain now as compared to a hundred years ago is more dangerous today because it creates a, a, a more da disastrous damaging effect on property. If I could just add one thing on the video, these are, you know, we have the format down pretty pat, it takes about 15 minutes, 20 minutes with an individual and you know, maybe another hour just on video time to really produce this for historical sake. But you saw last month, I think Kim updated previously that our most watched videos on YouTube are these three questions videos. I think people like them but we try to maximize them as well. We turn them into sort of Twitter cards with quotes and things that get you know, reposted. Um, we've also used them at conferences as sort of a running loop you know, at our booths and things and people will come and sit and watch them. We've also talked about playing them on, on public access, you know, like these com um, committee and board meetings are all on public access. We thought about looping them together once we had an hour content worth. I think there was an hour block that was requested. So they just run you know, as you all know, surprise how many people watch public access and watch these meetings. And so we thought that'd be a nice way to kind of keep getting the information out there. That's all I had unless there's any questions. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> business Leaders Task Force update, Mr. Dawson. We have not met since the last time we reported. Um, so we met first part of May, I believe, and I think Mark Nesbitt made a report to the board, but um, my guess is we'll be meeting sometime in the next month. Very good. Appreciate your, uh, your continued support. Land management, uh, we met yesterday, and I, I, I think really the um, PMC report went over most of what um, I could really ta speak to. Uh, they've been very, very active. You've got a handout in your packet. Um, item 9C, you can see the, um, the number of properties that are in active negotiations, uh, appraisals, and so on and so forth. So it's um, a very busy, hardworking group of folks that are, are working with landowners. Uh, beyond that, um, did you have anything else to add, Eric? Then we have the Moorhead Clay County JPA. Mr. Shockley, would you like to present that? Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the Diversion Authority Board. Uh, before you today, you have the Moorhead, Joint Power, Moorhead Clay County Joint Powers Agreement uh, regarding land acquisition in Minnesota. Uh, the G JPA that formed uh, the Diversion Authority contemplated that land in Minnesota could be acquired either by Clay County, Moorhead, or a Joint Powers entity created by Clay County and Moorhead. Uh, during the permitting process with Minnesota DNR, it was envisioned that the joint entity would be the acquiring property entity in Minnesota. Uh, the Minnesota board members uh, worked diligently uh, to develop a joint powers agreement between the two entities for land acquisition in Minnesota. Uh, the land acquisition process would be handled very similar to the Cass County Joint Water Resource District. Uh, and would likely utilize all the same personnel, uh, appraisers, uh, and different uh, uh, experts in the relative fields regarding land acquisition. The sole purpose of the Joint Powers Entity is land acquisition in Minnesota. Uh, this week, uh, the Moorhead City Council approved uh, the Joint Powers Agreement, as did the Clay County Commission. Uh, pursuant to the Joint Powers Agreement that created the Diversion Authority, the Diversion Authority Board has to consent to the approval of the entity. Uh, so we're asking today for uh, the uh, approval of the entity. Uh, the Minnesota members would like to start up the entity in July, uh, have their first meeting. Uh, the first order of business will be an application to the state of Minnesota for Minnesota DNR funds for the cost share of land acquisition in Minnesota. I can certainly answer any questions that you might have, but uh, 
there was a lot of time and effort put in it, to it. Uh, the board members uh, for this entity will consist of the two Clay County board members that sit on the diversion authority, the three Moorhead council members, uh, two council members and mayor that sit on uh, the diversion authority board, and then a member of the Buffalo Red Watershed District will also be on that board. The Buffalo Red Watershed District member cannot be the chair or vice chair. It's limited to the two elected bodies. So, And the idea was to get enough uh, interest and uh, input from the different entities regarding land acquisition for the project. Thank you. Questions or comments? Commissioner Campbell, do you have anything you'd like to add? Well, I, I, you know, I think this is is uh, needed. I think um, as we see property owners now starting to ask questions and and uh, look for um, uh, ways for them to to uh, understand how the purchase process works. I think it's I think this is really important. And and from the standpoint, as Mr. Shockley mentioned, the um, I think it's a it's a really good mechanism for us to continue to work with the state legislature uh, because we're going at it from both a, a, a joint effort from both the county and the city. So um, we certainly uh, need this, and it's um, it's I think it's a, a really good written document. So I would certainly look for support. And as a matter of fact, I would move that the DA. Um, gives their stamp of approval on this JPA. Thank you. You've heard the motion. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Sherling? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Dr. Mahoney? Aye. Mr. Pepcorn? Aye. Mr. Grinberg? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Wayland? Mr. Thorsted? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. And the motion carries. Uh, Mr. Jacobson, did you have anything you wanted to add from the Joint Water Resource District's perspective? We had a meeting this morning, and we had a meeting from the people working out in the field, and they said things have changed a little bit. Uh, initially, people said it's never going to get built, go away. Now they're saying it, it's going to get built, so let's sit down and work it out. So that's good news. And I think that's really reflective in this colorful report that we've, we've been getting every month. It's, it's an interesting document to take a peek at. So, uh, Mr. Dodds, did you have something further? Um, I don't have anything specific. I, w I guess on that report, the one thing I would maybe just point out on item 9C, the colorful report, page two of that is an overall status map that shows you the the color-coded status of where we're at with all of the parcels. As uh, uh, Commissioner Sherling pointed out, you'll see on the north end this month we have more green, which is good. Uh, we also have more blue, which means the appraisals have been completed and turned into offers, and now we've got an army of land agents out meeting with property owners. And uh, just this morning, as uh, uh, Dan noted, we had another batch of appraisals approved, and so those then turn into offers as well. Uh, so I think we're making good progress. However, um, you know, an appraisal is important and a real key important step in the process, but it's not as important as getting a purchase agreement signed, and so that's what we're focusing on now. And so I'm, I'm hoping that the momentum continues and we have offers turning into purchase agreements soon. So. Any questions for Mr. Dodds or for Mr. Jacobson? Great. Thank you very much. Moving on to finance. Madam Chair, um, as noted um, by your comments on land, PMC covered a lot of um, you know, item 10A. I would just note that um, expenditures to date cumulative is just a tad over $476 million. And our net cash position has grown to uh, a tad over $96 million. And as noted in the PMC report, um, um, $142 million dollars of budget that has not been expended. The budget detail and activities behind that, I'd be um, happy to answer any questions, but I would make the motion to accept the uh, financial report for the month of June. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. 
Thank you. Um, any questions or discussion on the finance report? Roll call, please. Mrs. Sherling? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Dr. Mahoney? Aye. Mr. Redborn? <clears throat> Aye. Mr. Grinberg? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Thorsted? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Item 10B, voucher approval. In front of you then is a request for payments to Cass County Joint Water Resource District, Dorsey Whitney, <clears throat> Onsted Twitchell, and Johnson and Associates for $1.865,154.33 million. I'd move for approval. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any, any discussion, any questions? Roll call, please. Mrs. Sherling? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Dr. Mahoney? Aye. Mr. Pepcorn? Aye. Mr. Grinberg? Aye. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Thorsted? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. And the motion carries. Um, contracting actions, I see Mr. Redlinger is at the ready there with task order number five. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the Board of Authority. Good afternoon. I'll provide just a brief summary of Task Order 5. This was a task order unanimously recommended by the Finance Committee yesterday and is consistent with our current uh, Master Services Agreement in place with the CH2M Hill, uh, now a wholly owned subsidiary of Jacobs and the Diversion Authority. Uh, so Task Order 5 defines the terms and conditions. In this case, uh, this will be a two and a half year task order, effective June 29 through December 31 of 2021, so approximately two and a half years. The subtasks are defined and are before you on page A2 of the task order, and uh, they are defined in, in 5A through 5I. Just a few highlights in these areas. We did create some new step-in rights for the owner, the Diversion Authority. Uh, given that we will be hiring an executive director and onboarding that person later this year, we wanted to have the opportunity in the agreement uh, to be able to have that director make some um, assessment of organizational structure and then also talk about where they would like to uh, either uh, modify uh, or, or, or perhaps de-scope some of the current services and then bring some of those in-house. We certainly believe there will be some interest in hiring some resources to support that new executive director. And so these step-in rights will permit that. And in particular, that will happen um, in the uh, areas of 5C, program controls and reporting, 5F, 5G, 5H. And uh, I would also note that in the subtask, we also split out, just for a bit of clarity for the board, in the future that the state and federal legislative affairs will be split up so you can see the level of effort in North Dakota and Minnesota at the next legislative sessions in the state uh, legislatures as well as the federal support provided by the Jacobs team. Uh, so all in all, um, a, a very uh, comprehensive task order and one that uh, was really the collaborative effort of the uh, owner's reps, technical reps, as well as uh, the, the PMC. So a, a credit and thanks to Jacobs for their assistance in this effort. In total, a $19.9 million uh, budget for the task order. And again, uh, about 18 or so FTEs throughout the duration for two and a half years. So uh, again, the unanimous recommendation of the Finance Committee yesterday. Happy to answer any additional questions that the board would have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Redmanier. Yes, I can attest that a lot of time and effort went into this. Uh, Mr. Grenberg, do you have any comments? No, I think Mike covered it, high level summary. Um, yesterday we had good discussion as well on the topic and you know, a lot of effort went into this. Um, I think a few of us had a little um, challenging thought process to go out six, seven, eight years and trying, trying to predict the future and as well as trying to factor in cost containment and what do we really need you know, two years from now, four years from now, six years from now. And um, so that all factored into this as well. And uh, as, as Mike noted, you know, everybody came together to come up with a reasonable plan to move us to the next stage. And you know, we'll answer a lot of the other questions as far as what we actually need down the road. I'd move for approval. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any job, Chad. Come on it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Any further discussion? We had a little competition for making motions yesterday. So. <laughs> Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Sherling? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Dr. Mahoney? Aye. Mr. Pepcorn? Aye. Mr. Grinberg? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Thorsted? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. The motion carries. Item 11, Executive Director Search Update. Mr. Wilson. Madam Chair, members of the board, the uh, Executive Director Search Group met earlier this week and uh, conducted Skype interviews with a uh, number of candidates. Uh, coming off of those Skype interviews, the search group is still in the process of developing a, a list of uh, finalists. 
Uh, and when that is, uh, uh, when that list is, is finalized and ready to move forward, we will have uh, a further update, but uh, certainly wanted to keep you apprised that, uh, that that process is underway. Questions for Mr. Wilson? And so then, can you just explain to the group what the next steps will be? Certainly. The, uh, at, uh, at the point that, um, that uh, a list of, or a group of finalists are identified, those, uh, those individuals would be, uh, the identity of those individuals be, would be made public, and we would be uh, in setting up the process to do some interviews, tours, bring those candidates in and, and do a, a more uh, personal interview process. We're gonna, we're, we're basing uh, off the, uh, really the first round that we, uh, that we uh, undertook uh, a couple of years ago now, and, and so there may be some tweaks to that process, but that's the basic plan that we will be uh, looking at once we have uh, identified those finalist candidates. So just a heads up for this group, yeah, there, there will be um, a schedule that we'll, you know, we'll have to try to all figure out when the best day is going to be that will work for the majority of, of our board members so that we can all be here for interviews. And that would be sooner rather than later would be my desire. So sometime in July, um, very soon, would be my hope. We, we anticipate that that, uh, that will be uh, somewhat of a, an effort to coordinate schedules in, in July as, as people are going in dir different directions for uh, uh, vacations and, and work travel and, and other items. But that, uh, uh, indeed, we are looking to, uh, to move forward at an uh, um, aggressive clip. Our community puts its best foot forward in July. We look great in July. So, OK, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Wilson? Any other business? Then item number 13, um, at this time we uh, would request that we go into an executive session and I would need a motion for that. I'll make the motion. I move that the Metro Flood Diversion Authority meet in executive session as authorized by North Dakota Century Code 44-04-19.1, subsections 2 and 9, to consult with its attorneys regarding the ongoing litigation in the matter of Richland Wilkin JPA and the Minnesota DNR versus the United States Army Corps of Engineers and the Fargo Moorhead Diversion Authority as its intervener. Civil file number 13-CV-02262-JRT-LIB. Thank you, Commissioner Pepcorn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Back to Mayor. And we are, <laughs> don't forget to come back here. Yes, please, and come back here quickly so we can all leave quickly. At this time, I will call this meeting reconvened. Uh, do you want a roll call? Do you want me to take a roll call? We don't need well, one. Well, okay, if we don't need one, then we won't have one. It looks like we all got back here. Yeah. So um, I would ask then Mr. Shockley. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the Diversion Authority Board. Uh, today we met in executive session uh, to discuss the federal litigation and arising out of that litigation uh, is the matter of the Buffalo Red Watershed District's uh, decision on Monday night of this week, June 24th, 2019. Uh, during that meeting, they originally voted 3-3 uh, not our, uh, regarding our permit approval and then told uh, the applicant here, the Diversion Authority, that they were no longer going to address the meeting or the permit at the meeting. Uh, and then all of our representatives uh, went home after that, uh, leaving the meeting as did the press. Uh, it is our understanding that following that decision, which was a tie vote, which uh, uh, it's unclear what the tie vote would have meant, uh, that without uh, notice to the applicant or the press or the public, uh, they then attempted to take the matter back up and deny our permit. Uh, during the executive session, uh, it, we recommended that their, the Diversion Authority Board take some type of legal action regarding that permit denial. So I would request that the board uh, make a motion to authorize litigation counsel Dorsey and Whitney uh, to take the appropriate legal action to appeal the decision of the Buffalo Red Watershed District denying our permit uh, and all other necessary appropriate legal action to remedy this matter uh, and that they act uh, in a, 
uh, act promptly in that regard. Commissioner Campbell? I, I would so move that motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Pepcorn. Is there any further discussion? Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Sherling? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Dr. Mahoney? Aye. Mr. Pepcorn? Aye. Mr. Grinberg? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Thorsted? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. And the motion carries. Can I just add one thing real quick? Mr. The Pepcorn. people that voted against the flood protection were from Becker County, Otter Tail County, and it's kind of ironic because next week's the 4th of July, how much money is going from Fargo and Moorhead to Becker County and Otter Tail County? And I hope the people that are going to Lake Country maybe ask the people when they're spending money there, how do you feel about having flood protection for our, for our fair area? Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Pepcorn. Any other comments? Any further discussion? Move to adjourn. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.